Um, though, so you, you when you come in to the WWE as Manu, you come in mm-hmm. and you immediately make an impact. You immediately get thrown with Randy Orton, which has got to be a great experience because Randy Orton, still young at the time, mm-hmm. But yet he was out in evolution. He was taught by Triple H, Ric Flair, and Batista learned underneath that tree as well. So what is that situation like? Are you uh, is Randy Orton giving you advice? Because I imagine you guys are kind of the same age. Yeah, yeah. Randy's a little bit older than me. Um, but yeah, it was it was really cool just to have him involved. Um, just because we knew with him being involved, we were gonna get better segments. <laughs> you know, he's a former world champion and all this stuff. So it was that was really helped that really helped with randy he was cool um it was kind of like follow my lead kind of lead by example he that's how he was um but yeah it was it was it was a great time to be with those guys uh, yeah and it's, again cody rhodes now is like the second biggest wrestler in the world besides roman reigns i guess if you want to go with that but then ted dibiase unfortunately is involved with some sticky situations and yeah, then uh that. you know mm, mm, don't don't like, don't like do bad things to everybody yeah yeah i guess yeah bad <laughs> things happen to people who do bad things and sometimes yeah, bad things happen sure. to good people but i'm not in that situation and we're not nope. talking about that situation um though eventually though you have i think you have a pretty good run but then you're kicked out of legacy you're kicked mm-hmm. out of the group and again what is the concept are you asking questions are you like why am i being kicked out yeah so um at that time when when i got kicked out of the group it was me and snooker got kicked out um, and the initial idea was we were supposed to get repackaged as a team, um, me and Snooker, and we were supposed to come back as baby faces to work um, Ted and Cody. Okay. Um, so that was the idea when we got sent home. And it just never happened. It just never happened. You released in February of 2009. So yeah. you, you came in and Unforgiven in 2008. I think it's like October of 08. 09. You're out. What's yeah. the excuse? Yeah, so um, I was told I wasn't aggressive enough. <laughs> um, total, like, kick in the nuts to me because I was insane at that time. They, like, they had to tone me down. Like, they, were, I was doing too much on, on house shows and stuff like that. And they were just like, hey, kid, you got to settle down, settle down, settle down. So I would settle down until they didn't say anything. And then when they did stop saying stuff. I guess I settled down too much. You know, it was never, it was a, it was a hard balance to figure out what they truly wanted to what I'm supposed to give them, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, yeah. When you have one person saying you're too aggressive, now you're being too light. Uh, um, yeah. you're like, I, I, I did what you told me to do and I am still somehow wrong in this situation. Uh, yeah. It's, that's wrestling. You know, it's, it's the way the beast <laughs> crumbles sometimes. And, you know, if I would go back, I, um, I would do things a little differently. You know, I think I would do it a little differently now. 25 years later with all this knowledge, yeah, I would do it a little different. Yeah, we're all, we're all, probably all of us would do a little something different if we knew the, the future. I, I'm wondering, though, do you think they were comparing you heavily to um, a past Simones or Umaga or things like that, expecting you to produce exactly like that? Or they were like, oh, you're, you're, too, yeah, you're too light. I was... I was in a weird position because Umaga was still on contract. He was just on SmackDown. They were doing the Raw and SmackDown branded thing. I was on Raw. He was on SmackDown. Um, I spoke English. He was more of a traditional wild Samoan. Um, I wore boots. I talked. He didn't, you know, Mm -hmm. whenever I would get tagged in the ring, if we would be overseas and stuff like that, the whole place would start chanting Umaga and stuff. So I thought naturally that the, the best idea would be to put me with him um however again that never happened um and yeah it's just i was that weird crossover samoan the one that talked the one that kind of hey hey he's talking like (laughs) hey look at this crazy the samoans talking you know and (laughs) yeah that was me and then now now they all talk so yeah interesting interesting uh yeah the, the pretty much i was in shock because I think I, we talked about this off camera, but I reached out to you maybe like six months ago because I was a big 
proponent and big supporter of Manu. Like I, I was so shocked as a viewer of watching a television program and seeing a character that clearly was supposed to do more, but suddenly was like ripped out of legacy, which to me made no sense because Manu, I thought was a better fit than Ted DiBiase. And um, you <laughs> Manu know, I had all the handcuffs on and couldn't do nothing out there. Because <laughs> like that's the thing to me was like okay, you have two crisp young, uh, you know, good looking little um wrestlers but then you have the powerhouse the manu like the guy who's gonna go out there and destroy people on the unleash the the kraken you know unleash the monster and randy orton had the keys and yet they never it felt like it was like a a car trying to move forward the the brakes on like it's like how can you move forward and go fast if the emergency brakes are on it it can't it won't be possible 